Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. And if you want to reach out to me, then there's a number of ways you can do that. You can visit the description below this video, number of ways you can connect with me to set up either a call with me to where we can go through your business and I can share with you some actionable steps to grow and scale. Or if you want to learn more about our Sports Accelerator program, this is our number one uh, business coaching program that we have for coaches, then there's a link below this video will take you to a landing page, watch the demo video of our program, and then book a, a call with me if you want to move forward. So today I want to talk about cost-saving tips for private soccer training sessions. Now. A question and a conversation that comes up regularly with the trainers that I either get on a call or they send me a message to my email or through WhatsApp is, Leo, how can I save money with training facilities or training space? So after getting on a number of, number of calls, I decided, you know what, I'm going to create a video talking about a number of ways that you can save money with this problem, okay? It's a problem that a lot of coaches have, but it's a problem that can be solved if, number one, you make a commitment to solving it, and the next one, if you go through the, the steps that I'm about to share with you today and you implement them, you will not only save money, but you might end up finding somewhere to train permanently all year round okay so the first one is utilize public spaces now what i want you to do is go into google and find public spaces that you could potentially use to run your training sessions so this could be public parks this could be a public sports facilities right sometimes there's there's tennis courts or there's soccer fields right go and have a look on google find out what public spaces are in your area that you could use to run sessions now what i want you to do is be very creative with how you do this and think about how you can adapt your training sessions to those public spaces right sometimes if you don't have the luxury of using a full five-a-side a field to, to run your run your training sessions how can we adapt it to where we can still run training sessions but maybe on a different surface or a different way now next one is negotiate with local facilities now what i want you to do as well go into google and have a look at local training facilities in your area okay so this might be uh schools uh, local uh, rec centers okay go and have a look it might be local soccer clubs and look to try and negotiate a way to be able to use their facility now i'll give you an example of a coach that we've worked with who went through this problem and solved it by negotiating so what he did he did research in his local area. He found out what local facilities they are. And what he did is he got in contact with these facilities or these venues. And he asked them, right, what time of the day or what days during the week are you guys not busy? So what he found out was, right, there were certain days during the week where nothing was going on maybe the maybe the fields were empty or maybe that that place just what there weren't clients being using it so what that what that coach managed to do is he managed to negotiate a price and time to be able to use that facility okay so negotiating will be one way that you can solve this problem of saving money on a training space and also getting it 
at a much cheaper rate, but also long term, you might be able to run sessions out of that place all year round. Okay, but you need to make you need to be proactive with this and have a look at local uh, local facilities in your area. So it could be schools, it could be church gyms or church halls, it could be YMCA centers, it could be uh, sports centers, right? Anywhere in your local area that you, that you know, right? I can run a, a session out of. Right, connect with that facility, ask them, right, what, what are the days and times during the week where you guys are free? And they'll be able to tell you. And what you can is negotiate a price and time with them. Okay. So that's another way of saving money with your training business. Now, next one is indoor versus outdoor options. So I know for me personally, when I run my training business, Something I do is during the spring and the summer, I move all my sessions to a public park, right? And what we do is we hire out a public park and we run all our group training sessions from there. Now, when it comes to winter, we find a venue that has a floodlights and also it has a turf field. So this is how you go through different times of the year right so if during the year spring and summer you're able to be outside because where you are permits you to right you could go outside use a public park and save money on uh, the costs of being outdoors right just if you were a little bit of a recommendation is that if you were to use a public park Make sure that you have permission to use that location, right? Just because it's a public open space doesn't mean that you don't need a permit, right? There's a lot of uh, parks in and around the United States and across the US that you do need a permit to be able to run training sessions out of, especially if you're doing group sessions. But that's a way that I, I overcome that situation right so it's spring and summer we go outdoors we use grass field and then during the winter we either find somewhere that has a light and a turf field or if not we'll go and use a local church hall or a school gym okay and you know you'll be saving money because during the winter it, it may cost you more money but at least you're going to find somewhere to train all year round. And then once the winter's done, then you move back outside where you're going to be able to have more room, bring on more clients, generate more money ready for them when you when you go into the winter season and maybe your costs go up. Uh, shared training sessions. So an example of a, a trainer that we've worked with is he's reached out to local clubs and he's negotiated a price on using some of the area or half of the field that they aren't using, okay? But the best way to do this is go and research and have a look at local uh, clubs in your area and see how much of a specific field they are using. If you know that they're only using half a field, then you could reach out to them and say, right, I know that your, your U10s or your U11s on a Thursday evening are only using half of a field. Can I hire the other half out from you guys to run my small group sessions or to run my one-to-one -one sessions? Okay, so that's another way of ne negotiating. Um, also, collaborating or partnering up with other trainers so if you know of other trainers in your local area who might be going through that same uh, problem, you guys might decide to partner up and split the costs of your, your, your training uh, space, okay? Now, this doesn't have to um, affect neither of your business. All it is is, is a partnership that we go half and half on 
the training space, right? And that's going to save you money. It's going to save them money. And in the long term, right, it's going to work out for all, for, for both of you. Now, that's only going to work if, you know, you guys have a contract in place and you do things correctly and properly. Okay, the next one is home-based training. So running some of your sessions via Zoom. Uh, so if you're in a part of the world or the US where you know that you can be outdoors, but sometimes, you know, it might storm a lot, it might rain a lot, and you might not be able to, to run your training sessions, having the, the option of moving clients online during those times of the year is a good way to continue tra continue the training when you can't be outside. Right. Now, this is going to work, and this has worked with a lot of the trainers that we work with, but you've got to have systems in place to where the communication with your clients is, is good, and they know the terms and conditions. They know that, right, once it's storming, the session is still going ahead, but what we're going to do now is we're going to move it to an indoor, uh, sorry, we're going to move it to online, okay, so it's going to be virtual training. And some coaches, when they onboard clients, that is a requirement that they have to have. So they, one of the requirements is, do you have some indoor space where you can run some training sessions out of? Because what we do, if we can't be outside, we still run the training, but we we move it virtually. So the so your child still getting training, and they're not missing out on that training session. Uh, next one, online training platforms, very similar, but this one is more of creating an online training program for your clients to do when they're not with you. So if you know that during the winter you have to go indoors and that's going to be more expensive, you might reduce your training session hours to just one day and then create an online training program where your customers go through the rest of the week. Okay, so instead of running two sessions per week, right, you might have one session in person and the other session they have to complete one part or one module of the online training uh, program that you have in place. Right, that's another way of cutting costs and making sure that your, you know, your clients are still training with you during, during the entire year. Uh, DIY training equipment. So this pretty much means buying your own uh, lights or buying your own equipment to be able to run sessions. Okay, some coaches, that's what they do. They, they go and use a public park, but because that public park might not have uh, lights later in the evening, then what they do is they'll buy a set of four uh mini mini lights that they can continue to run their sessions out of uh, during the winter season or during the season where days get shorter okay so investing into into training equipment will help you to cut costs because instead of going and renting a facility that you have to rent for light you've got to uh, rent for a, a turf turf field you might just use a public park but buy your own set of headlights, uh, sorry, set of lights where you can still run your training sessions. Uh, next one, local partnerships. This is also a good one. So when it comes to the winter months, you might partner up with a local business. And part of the partnership is that that local business helps you to, helps you with the costs of your indoor or your training space during the winter months. And there might be some, some type of agreement where that, you know, you're able to promote their business on your website, on your social media. If you've got training jerseys that you use, you might put their, their company logo on the front. And in exchange, all they're doing is they're helping you to fund the, the training costs of the facility during the months when you need it the most. OK, so these are a number of ways that you can save money on, on training facilities, uh, cut your costs during the months where you most need it. OK, 
and also just be able to save money and have an all year round program and be able to, to train clients uh, for the entire year. Okay, if you need more help, again, if you have a look at the screen in front, below in green, there's a number of ways you can get in contact with me, but also visit the description below where there's gonna be a number of links where you can learn more about Accelerator Program and you can even book a, a free 15 minute call with me where we jump on Zoom, I ask you a couple of questions, see where you're at, see where you wanna to get to and I can show you some actionable steps to take this week to grow and scale your training business. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel.